Hey there, it's Sean again, and this is another exciting feature of um, Teardown Tube. And yeah, I know I haven't posted for a little while. I'm back at college, so uh, let's get right into it. As you can see, I just ordered a used Game Boy Pocket, and I always wanted one of these guys as a kid, but my parents were really strict and they wouldn't let me play video games, really. I know, sob story. But anyway. Now I have one. I'm going to end up hacking and modifying it like crazy. But before I do any of that, I want to show you guys the innards of one of these systems. Oh man, this is just retro goodness. Uh, so first of all, take out the batteries. Put them over here. And take out the cartridge. Oh man, I love these old cartridge-based systems. Annoying thing about the cartridge, I can't tear it down for you now because I left my, it has a security bit. I left um, my only security bit back home, so um, there's a way of using a, um, a lighter and like a, um, a big pen. You can melt the plastic and then form a bit around there and carefully remove it, but eh, it's too much trouble. I'll just tear it down for you guys when I get home. So now, <clears throat> one thing annoyingly that you'll notice, there'll be six screws inside here which is not that different than anything else but they're tri-wing screws which is not that annoying you can get away with using a small enough flat head but be very careful while you're torquing it otherwise you could strip the head but I just so happen to have a tri-wing screwdriver that I got with my um, my weak key fusion so that's perfect for uh, taking these guys out so let's just get right into it And uh, just a little background info, Game Boy Pocket was um, introduced in 96, I believe the original Game Boy came out in like 89 or something like that. So I remember when I was a kid and, you know, everyone's grandma had one of these and, you know, in the schoolyard everyone would be playing with the link cables, here's the link port, and um, playing Pokemon. Oh man, just, unfortunately I, I never got one and... A little bit of a sore point for me, but only two more screws left. And we're almost done. Okay, well, I guess before that, let's go over the basic features. You have your, um, it's a serial link port, your volume um, wheel. Contrast, a um, 160 by, I believe, like a 140, um, uh, four, four uh, color, gray, or not color, four um, level grayscale monochrome um, reflective LCD. You got your power indicator, D-pad, A, B, start, select, just like any other Game Boy. And at the top is your power switch. On the bottom, you'll find a headphone jack and a 3-volt um, DC adapter input. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's pull this sucker open. On the back, all you pretty much have is a molding for the double or triple A battery. It uses two of them, and your cartridge insert uh, slot there. And that's pretty much it. You got some shielding, and that's all that's interesting right there. Now for the innards, you'll notice the um, center is taken up by the um, the card slot right in there. Let's see if I can get better lighting. Which is meh. Okay. Um, and you have your battery input terminals. Your speaker in your lower corner there. And you'll notice right in the center right here. Uh, it's horrible lighting. Sorry about that. It's going to take me a little while to get things uh, just right. Let me open the shade. Should be a little bit better. Okay, you'll notice the uh, main CPU, which is actually the same one that was used in the original Game Boy, and it's the same one that's used in the um, the uh, Super Game Boy for the SNES cartridge. It uses actually the same hardware processor. And you'll notice the main clock crystal, which is um, at a frequency of 4.1934 um, megahertz, I assume. 
Uh, you can actually overclock this pretty easily by replacing this crystal, but, you know, stability may vary. Uh, you'll notice the surface mount power switch there. Uh, be careful when reassembling to make sure that's in the same position as the plastic um, outer retainer, otherwise you could snap that. And the ribbon cable going to the LCD. This guy is a ZIF, so you just got to lift up on either side, fingernails or screwdriver carefully, and pull it out a little bit till it clicks. And then you should just be able to lift out that tab right there. Now at this point you have three screws. These are standard Phillips. Uh, in order to lift out the main board. Nothing uh, too complicated. This is nowhere near as hard as opening up like an iPod or something. That's what I love about like older technologies and electronics. Dirt easy to open up. Okay. Come on. Okay, now that that's out, you can just lift out. Be careful of the speaker. Ta-da! Here's the front side surprise, huh? Pretty much nothing on the front side other than the contacts for the buttons, uh, the jacks, uh, the speaker, uh, test points, lots and lots of test points, and the power LED, as well as this little circuit right here. You may have noticed that this only uses um, two AAA batteries as opposed to the original Game Boy using four for about six volts, and I'm sure there's a linear regulator in there, because most CMOS logic uh, at the time is uh, five volts. So... How do you run something with a 5 volt um, supply rail voltage off of two AA's, you say? Well, you use this little guy right here, which is essentially all it is is a, a step up converter. Like some module that you can buy from, um, like the P uh, PTH modules you can buy from uh, Texas Instruments nowadays. Pretty much no different. And um, that will take your three point uh, three volt input and step it up to five volts necessary for the uh, the processor. And other than that, uh, not not anything all that uh, exciting. I mean, so many hours of uh, childhood uh, spent for most kids, and it's uh, not all that complicated. All the logic is like concentrated in the upper half of the board. So if you wanted to modify this, you could actually pretty easily just chop off, chop it in half, rewire all the buntons and an, an external uh, DC DC and all the ports and whatnot, and you could make this tiny. Maybe one day I might do that. But anyway, power switch, it's just a simple slide type, and the um, the click that you normally get is actually from the, um, the upper half of the case. There's a little tab in there that uh, snaps whenever you switch it. Okay, other than that, I don't think there's much to uh, be said about the motherboard. Uh, it's just really pretty to look at. I like how they use dual uh, color silk screening <laughs> to kind of separate each half of the board. Okay, now we come to the uh, front side of it. Just have your standard uh, rubber membrane with uh, carbon contacts that press down on the, uh, the uh, gold-plated uh, button contacts. And other than that, it's just like it's exactly like you'd find in like any um, NES or SNES game controller that you'd expect for the buttons and the LCD itself. Which let's see if I can pull it out. I'm gonna I'm planning on doing an RGB um, backlight mod on this guy and using a microcontroller to um, pulse with the output so I can save on battery life and whatnot. But um, you have to be really careful with these guys because they are very, very fragile. And as far as I know, if you break the LCD, you're going to need to buy a new one. And this is pretty much it. There's some little damage at the top there, which is a pain in the butt, but uh, it came that way. Um... So if you want to do the backlight mod, you're going to actually have to pull off the um, reflective backing material. Um, and if you want to do it cleanly, it's easier to pull off the polarizing film because it's thicker, so you can pull it off much easier. But do not, under any conditions, uh, damage either this side um, heat-pressed uh, flex cable or this guy right down here because you will get dead pixels and whatnot out the wazoo faster than you can, you know, say dead pixels. Uh, so let's just put that guy back in there. <laughs> Press it down. 
and okay we're good to go uh, back for reassembly make sure you get that ribbon cable in there and as I said once again the uh, power switch has to be in the right position and everything just kind of uh, magically fits back down in there three screws that we took out for securing the motherboard put them back in if you get confused if the uh, these three screws go in the um, screw holes with the circle silk screened on them the other ones with the X's are for the um, the tri wing screws that secure the back case on be careful not to over torque the screws otherwise you could strip it because they're just um, set in the plastic these are self tapping screws and that should be good don't forget to um, re reinsert the cable and lock it using the ZIF bar and then we can go and re put on the back cover oh, wrong screwdriver Yeah, I just uh, ordered an old, um, an old Pokemon Blue uh, used game cart, so that you know I can have that in my collection. Because <laughs> although I never owned a copy myself or a Game Boy Pocket myself, a lot of my friends did, and I would always borrow their Game Boys and play on the school bus. <laughs> Yeah, actually, my first game system was a Game Boy Advance SP um, that I got when I was, I, don't know, I want to say like 15 or 16, so I was a little late to the game. But ever since then, I've been, I've been really into uh, gaming, probably because my parents never let me uh, get any games. Just to show you guys, it still works. go everything uh, appears to be working and there we go uh, I suck anyway it's really hard playing through a camera looking at a monochromatic screen <laughs> with horrible lighting but uh, here you go Gotta love it. Vintage gaming hardware. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I have uh, more for next week. And yes, I will be doing this regularly. I'm sorry about the uh, last two weeks. Uh, I was getting ready packing and you know moving into my uh, my dorm. So I didn't really have any time to do any of this. Um, yeah, video is kind of shorter than uh, I've been usually doing. Uh, 13, 14 minutes so far. But um, I'll definitely have more for you next week. And subscribe, like, comment, watch my videos, you know. Uh, hopefully I'm not just doing this all for nothing. Hopefully I actually have people viewing my videos. But, um, you know, keep on, uh, keep on opening stuff, modifying stuff. You know, curiosity is never a bad thing. Just uh, be careful with the electronics that you are modifying and opening. Other than that, keep on gaming, <laughs> I guess. See you guys next week.